Hello again, St. Lucia, and welcome to the program, Agriculture on the Move. I am Philip Sidney, your host. Today, we will be speaking about a very important commodity, a very important tree, coconut. Today, we will speak about the coconut tree. We will speak about the coconut program as it relates to the Ministry of Agriculture and also Cardi. With me today is Mr. Barry Innocent, former Director of Agriculture Services, well, Deputy Director, and he's now the country representative for Cardi here in St. Lucia. Welcome to the program, Mr. Innocent. Thank you, Mr. Sidney. My pleasure to be here, happy to be here, especially concerning such a very important tree crop. Definitely a very important tree crop. Um, on the heels of our cassava and coconut festival, which we had um, on Sunday gone, uh, which was a huge success. We'll be talking about it a little later. Um, we also know that uh, World Coconut Day is on the September 2nd, Second, yes. which is very soon. Um, why World Coconut Day? Well, I think it was a collaborative effort. The major producers of coconut in the world are Indonesia, um, Philippines, and India. Mm -hmm which are from the Asian Pacific community. They formed an organization called Asian Pacific Coconut Community. And they came together and realizing how important, both economically and socially, the coconut trees to them mm -hmm. and to the rest of the world, they decided to initiate World Coconut Day by honoring and celebrating it every 2nd September, every year annually. Now you must realize that almost 90% of the world's production of coconuts is from the Asia Pacific coconut community between mm -hmm. Indonesia, India, um, Philippines, and those other countries around that area there. And they, they, they realized that, I mean, you could do so many things with coconuts as we were discussing previously. Mm -hmm. So many things can be done with coconuts. I mean, a coconut tree alone can last, can live to about 80 to 100 years. Mm -hmm. But it's a good source of food and many materials, as we discussed before. Correct. You can use the coconut to do so many things yeah, from, from making um, tents by the beach, using the leaves to cover there. Furniture. And the furniture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Using the leaves to make hats and, 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 and at work. Even in the Vietnam War and the Second World War, it was whenever, whenever the, the IV intravenous fluid yes, yes. was not available. The doctors on the ground used coconut water to give the soldiers that are wounded intravenous fluids. Yes, correct. Because of the plasma content and stuff like that. You mm -hmm. know, and plus, coconut is high in electrolytes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you look at it, one coconut water has double the amount of electrolytes than a common sports drink. Okay. So after you do a nice good workout, you know, it's a good thing to drink because it'll give you more energy, uh, help your muscles recover. Mm -hmm. so, so there are many important benefits to it. We can explore and talk mm -hmm. about it for a long time. Long time. But okay, uh, I know the ministry years years ago, um, there was a, a coconut um, program. Planting. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I know when you were the deputy director, I think you were the point person uh, looking at the, the, that initiative. Yes. Um, tell us about this. Where, when you were there, what were the objectives and okay. where we are today? Again, the government of that day saw the importance of coconut production and how it's affecting rural livelihoods. As we speak, the last statistic shows over 150 families, farm families, mm -hmm. depend on selling coconut water by the roadsides. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to rural economies for a lot of ways, whether from the food that can be made of it, the coconut oil, and, and the, the fresh coconut water. So the government, they decided to um, invest $100,000 in a coconut replanting program or project, which is where I came in. Mm -hmm. I was the project coordinator. So in that program, CARDI worked with the Ministry of Agriculture, where CARDI was responsible for receiving over 5,000 
seed nuts or coconut or dry coconuts from the farming communities and then Cardi would do early sprouting on it where you know they cut the surface put it along some type of way to cause it to sprout early than it normally do or to germinate correct early than it normally does so after Cardi had received these 5,000 plus nuts sprouted them and Cardi then redistributed them in collaboration and partnership with Ministry of Agriculture to the farming community uh, so we had about 5,000 trees going into the ground Right? And that was the, the, the first phase of the project. Now, whilst that project was going on, we got wind, winds of, or we, it was said that, or it was reported that the lethal yellow disease was hitting St. Kitts and some of the islands in the north of mm -hmm. the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. So when I heard that, I spoke with the NPS and said, listen, you know, um, if this disease comes to St. Lucia, it can put on almost every tree. Correct. And this, this disease takes about six months to do that. Once it reaches on a tree, in about six months, the tree can go down. Mm -hmm. So when I thought about, on the ministry's management at the time, the permanent secretary, the deputy permanent secretary, the minister at the time, decided, you know what, this is too important. Coconut is too important to the communities. What are we going to do? So we said, you know what, we use only $20,000, we've got $100,000, and we save $80,000 um, with the plan to bring in lethal yellow disease resistant varieties into St. Lucia. Okay. And in that 80 grand, we brought in over five to 6,000 lethal yellow disease resistant tissue cutter coconut plant into St. Lucia. Okay. And of course, you know the rest, you know, we, we had to go through a process of weaning them into our atmosphere mm -hmm. and then doing the, the next the redistribution again to the farming community and public as at large. Mm -hmm. The only challenge we had is that when two things there's a heat with a heat at the time so it, 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 it caused a, a few fatalities in the nuts but also the necessary documentation in terms of the farmers that came in and the public that came in to get the trees the, the records of that was, it was a, little, a little bit of an issue but that has been sorted out because right now on the ground we're trying to find who these people are and try to work with them i have seen some of those trees mm -hmm. they seem to be doing well they're bearing bearing fruit yes mm -hmm. yes since our, our um in what, what year was it? 2018, when we had the, we had the, um, we had the um, Ministry of Agriculture had the uh, World Food Day activity at Chasse there. Right. And there's a farmer there right there with there with trees with nuts. Mm -hmm. and he showed it to me. Okay. I know an ex farmer by um, Leon S area there that has a tree that has nuts in it also. So I know some of them are bearing. Um, those who took care of it. Um, would have bed. Those that didn't, and they planted, then never looked at it, turned their back on it. It may have, have challenges because now we have to compete with grass and other shrubs around the area. Mm -hmm. But generally, um, it is good to know that if lethal yellow disease were to come to the now, we would have some level of uh, resistance. resistance mm -hmm. you know? But that particular variety, what was it mainly for? Was it was it for 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 processing or for uh, was it a water nut? It is mainly a water nut. Mm. And what is different about it? It was high yielding, mm -hmm. but, but good quality nut. Mm -hmm. That was the main thing about it. And in, again, with the resistance to the lethal yellow disease. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think it's a good thing to know that our country has secured that planting material, yeah, that germplasm yeah, there, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. a good thing. Now, moving forward, um, right now, the, the water nut industry has really shot up. Yes. Okay? Yes. Um, uh, but then we need also to have a balance. Definitely. Because the agro-processing side of it is key, because we have the natural coconut oil, which is which uh, uh, it is done now, mm -hmm. um, and other derivatives coming from from the, from the, from the nut. Yes. So uh, where are we with the other varieties? There are, there are some tall varieties that are strictly for processing. Um, okay. go, one of the days where we used to process down in, in, in Sufre, in you know, and we saw the truckloads coming down into Sufre on the morning. That's gone. Um, so where are we now? Well, for Cardi, from Cardi's perspective, what Cardi is doing right now, Cardi has, is, is right now distributing, giving freely tall coconut trees. Free? Free. And in fact, I have some farmers coming in tomorrow, some coming on Monday, some take 100, some take 50, some take 75 and go and plant it in their states. Mm -hmm. For the same reason you mentioned, you have to have balance. There's a great interest into the fresh coconut water because fresh coconut water is, is revitalizing and mm -hmm. it's, it's attractive. Mm -hmm. But then for coconut oil, you need the tall trees because the tall trees give you more oil than the short trees. The short trees right. give you more water. Correct. So um, CAD is now looking into giving and donating to anybody in the public mm -hmm. um, the planting material for tall trees. 
Okay. So what 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 when you say tall to you, what 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 the what's the variety? Pacific tolls. So Pacific tolls. Yeah, not Atlantic, Pacific okay. tolls, which is the more updated and, and it, that, that's imported. Well, I would say, or, 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 or it's, yeah. it's a, it was already here so, and you'll just propagate it. Yeah, it, it came in. We don't know how it came in, but it came in with this hair. Okay. And then it was propagated. Okay, okay. Yes. There's there's a famous variety called Coco Despine. Mm -hmm. How how is that? <laughs> where, where does that fit in, in the whole melee? Well, it fits in because thank God for the um, what used to be the national stakeholders platform for coconuts, mm -hmm, which right. is now the Coconut Cooperative in St. Lucia. All right. They have gone into develop a germplasm bank where they are incorporating all these different varieties into a, 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 a planting them in a particular place location mm -hmm. so that they can be continued and the, the genetics can be continued. Mm -hmm. And um, I think Cali also plans to do some work in the Ministry of Agriculture at the Volet Agriculture Station, to right. germplasm bank, but we also want to include all these varieties in there, including mm -hmm. we have a new variety we, we, um, we yet to actually identify scientifically where it came from. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But this tree bears net at such a short height yeah. that you literally have to lie down on the ground. That's a small one with the, it's almost it's brownish. Not, it's not small, yes, there's, a, there's a green and there's a, a brown. Yes. But you literally have to lie down on the ground to pick the nets because they're yes. laying from the ground. Yes, yes, yes. Which brings me to another subject. We are currently, Cardi is currently in, in discussion with the president and members of the um, Persons with Disabilities in St. Lucia, mm -hmm. the National Council for Persons with Disabilities, Disabilities in St. Lucia. We try to work with them because we want to do a training exercise with them on how to take care of coconuts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But after that, we want to give them these, these dwarf nuts. Because, because some of them might be wheelchair brown or, or in, uh, physically impeded in some way, mm -hmm. they may not be able to climb. So a short tree that they can actually lie down and pick nuts. Yes, and pick yes, nuts. Yes. So we're planning to do something with them hopefully around the 2nd of November this year, do this training and also issue these dwarf nuts to them. Now, let us get this clear. Mm -hmm. But people have this. Uh, no, no, note that um, tough and tall. No, grafted coconut trees. Okay. Two days are not grafted. You're very correct. Right? They are dwarf nuts correct. because they they they, they early bear bearing. early. Yes. Right? They still grow tall after Eventually, a while. But Eventually, but it's a long time. But it's a long time. Yes. In other words, they start to bear, to, to to bear very short. So yes. there's nothing like graft nut trees. It's not grafted. Yeah. There is, there's, there's a lot of um, back and forth on this in terms of the, the, the true dwarf. Mm -hmm. Some schools of thoughts, like in India, some places in India talk about the chattel dwarf tree. Mm -hmm. When you look at the tree, it's very short for true. Mm -hmm. I look at the ages of them, they're still kind of short. Mm -hmm. So there is, there is evidence to show that um, there are early birds that get tall, but there's also evidence to show that there's some level of dwarfism right. involved. Yeah. But I think because of the way the coconut tree is cross-pollinated, right. over the years, th this lineage seems to be um, um, cross-bred. Yes. So you yes, have a different yes. type of thing different, happening now. Correct, correct. Because yes. I remember when I was on the training at the Union Architecture Station, you notice on both sides of the, the road, the highway, yes, yes. They, were, they was interplanted with mango trees. Right. And they, were and they are still there, but they're tall. Yes. <laughs> they're yes, tall. Yes, yes. The other thing, too, um, is the resiliency of the coconut tree. Oh, uh, yes. Let me tell you, when oh, yes. um, the, there's something called dead cell, right, and, and it forms cork, mm -hmm. you know, that, that tree can be used so, in so many ways, all right, in terms of furniture. Yes. Um, I know the... You have to stop you there. <laughs> when you say furniture, beautiful furniture. Beautiful furniture, yes. I mean, you've seen it. Yes. The chairs, the tables. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, 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 way the, 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 the way it beautifies the furniture is really beautiful. Yes, it's oh, really, 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 really beautiful. Yeah, but, and, and I know, I remember years ago when people were building houses, they, 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 they were used as, as, as um, at, at, the, at the bottom of the houses, yes, right? As, as poles, yes. you know, and, and that was for years. Even 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 at the at at where at the fishing bays, Correct. when they when they, 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 they would use this to, 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 to build what they call it the, the jetties. Yes. You yes. Know? And the moment it, there is water there, it stays longer. It it, it actually cures it even better. But the behavior of the tree speaks to that. Oh yes. Do you know hurricane? If you see goes down, they're breaking the coconut, the head of the coconut tree will reach touch the ground. Touch the go back up. Come back yeah, again. Yeah. Not breaking. Yes, it. yes. It's very 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 flexible. You know, in that regard. Yes, okay. Yes, yes. All right. And uh, and. That's how resilient that coconut tree Very is. Resilient. We are due for a break. Okay. You're watching Agriculture in the Move. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon. For effective chemical treatment of Black Sigatoka, practice routine preventative maintenance of all tools and equipment, especially the mist blower, to ensure proper functioning. 
clean sprayer after use, and service the machine regularly, as recommended by the manufacturer. Whenever you are using pesticides to control black cigatoka disease, personal protection and safety measures must be followed. Spray operators must always wear proper protective gear. Before or when handling pesticides, put on your overalls, respirator, goggles, boots, and gloves to avoid contact with the skin, inhalation, and ingestion of pesticides. For more information on how to treat and control Black Sigatoga on your farm or in your backyard garden, contact the Black Sigatoga Management Unit at 451-5491, 451-5894, or email bpmu at candw.lc. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Agriculture in collaboration with the International Cooperation and Development Fund of the Republic of China on Taiwan. To the program Agriculture on the Move. Today we're talking coconuts. And of course, with me is Mr. Barry Nocent, who is the country representative for Cardi Hens and Lucia. Uh, what could that be? Tell us, are there anything happening on the day itself, any activities? Well, yes. On the day itself, CADI, the Caribbean Agricultural Research and Development Institute, which is popularly called CADI, mm -hmm. will be launching a regional competition which will involve comp competitions for innovations in products or technologies throughout the coconut tree. Mm. So um, we're looking at getting as many persons as possible, as many persons as possible involved from schools to adults and some of the prizes involve uh, tickets to go to the Cayman Islands in the Cayman Islands where we're going to have the Caribbean Week of Agriculture. Okay. we we'll organized to get um, you to there. That's the winner of the um, winners of the, uh, the competition. competition. It, but it's just a means to encourage again persons to look at all the different industries and what different things can be done with coconuts and to encourage inventiveness and creativity and innovation. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping that we'll get some very beautiful um, products and technologies that come out of this mm -hmm. that possibly can lend itself to economic development in some way or the other. Okay. Barry, there, of course, in production of any crop, there's also pests. Yes. Uh, so I know there are a few of them. I remember the, the, the coconut mite some years ago. I mean, it is still there, yes. uh, but it's not as, as, as far as an economic threat is concerned. Okay. But there are, uh, th there are other pests that are affecting the coconut. Can you tell us some of those pests? Yes. So you have the mites. Um, which may, may not be, as you said, um, of great, great, great significance, but it does affect the quality of the, mm -hmm. the fruit. Mm -hmm. Because it means you, can now, you cannot now export that fruit because one person see that, that might effect. That's cow on it, yes. Yeah, it's, yes. it's, it's always um, defacing to the fruit. That's right. But you also have the South American palm weevil, which has been now taking some level of significance. Mm -hmm. um, Cardi, in partnership with the Ministry of Agriculture and the plant health teams, mm -hmm. uh, we went around the island looking. We, we, um, we trained farmers, extension officers, and other stakeholders in the sector on how to identify it, mm -hmm. um, how to control it. And then we, we also showed them how to make a simple trap out of something that is normally thrown away. Mm -hmm. You know, simple water bottle you drink from, there's the large one, there's the small one. Mm -hmm. But in a simple trap, you, you take the two bottles, you put it together, upside down, you create a little window-like effect, mm -hmm. and you put some pheromone, even some sugar cane mm -hmm. at the bottom there. It, it attracts the salmon weevil, because it knows the smell of it. It goes down, so it goes down in a kind of a V-shaped pathway. All right. Once it goes through the, the, the entrance to the bottle, which puts it at the bottom of this bottle, it can't come back up. It's having challenges going back up. Okay. Just about, just about what, three weeks ago, I went on a farmer's farm and he had about seven South American palm weavers in his trap. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But they went down, they couldn't come back up. So we showed the farmers and officers how to make this simple thing. They put a little piece of metal that you hang it on your tree like that. And, and plenty of South American palm weavers have been caught. And we are now documenting it. The Ministry of Agriculture team has been very instrumental in actually going around the island, mm -hmm. setting up traps and taking population count of how many were seen and where mm -hmm. it was seen. So far, it looked like a lot of fun in Soufre, in um, Delce, in Chozel, and some in the north also. Mm -hmm. But this, this South American palm weevil is, is critical because what it can do, it actually can kill the tree. Okay. And it's affiliated also with the red wing. The red wing uh, disease? Yes. Ah, ah. So, it, it actually feeds on the, the heart of the tree. 
Okay. Right? And the hollow tree is very important to the tree because if the, when that dies out, the tree eventually starts to collapse. Little by little, it starts right, to collapse. Right. It takes a while to do that, okay. it collapses. So, cladding felt is important with the Ministry of Agriculture. We also felt it's very important to mm -hmm. do some level of regret, of re redress, okay. and some level of, of resolve. Mm -hmm. well, so, we've come together and we've been working and giving these traps away, showing the farmers how to make these traps mm -hmm. and, and, and apply it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been doing very well. Are there any other uh, threats? Well, before I talk about threats, I want to talk about also, uh, apart from these traps, there are some organic or natural treatments that can be used, mm -hmm. but this seems for, for the mites. Oh, okay, okay. Because okay. the Ministry of Agriculture, um, um, in, in collaboration with Cardi, realized that mites are becoming very prevalent. Mm -hmm. We decided to look into a control, but because of how health conscious the world is these days, we were looking at some organic and uh, natural treatments. Integrated pest control? Yes, yeah, so we're looking mm -hmm. at like golden seed and aromite, which is a natural pesticide. There's no artificial chemical in it, it's, it's not toxic. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if you drink it, it wouldn't do anything. It's, but, you know, and we are now about to start an experiment in um, Petone there. Um, on some trees to see how well this this these organic and natural pesticides will work against the mites. Okay, okay. Further to that, again, you have the liver yellow disease, which is not in Saint Lucia at the moment, mm -hmm. but it's a threat. So I think um, the good thing about liver yellow disease is the same the same practices mm -hmm. that are being done for the TR4 right now mm -hmm. in terms of um, the food baths and all the different Correct. things that applies to it naturally. Okay. Because the lethal yellow disease is caused, is, is carried or the vector for it, or the host for it, is a small grasshopper, they call a leaf hopper. Mm -hmm. Very tiny thing, about yes, the size of yes. my needle. Yes, yes. About what, the, about quarter inch. Mm -hmm. And once this thing hops on, uh, this thing can simply hop on somebody's shirts. Uh, you know, most of the airports in our Caribbean. It's, tr it's transported. Yes. Most mm -hmm. of the airports in our Caribbean are close to coconut trees. Mm -hmm. They jump on somebody's shirt, somebody's bag, somebody's suitcase, and can be moved across from one country to the next. Mm -hmm. Worse than that is the fact that the leaf hopper likes to hang around grass. So we try to discourage persons mm -hmm. from moving lawn, um, um, nice lawns from one country to the next mm -hmm. because the, the leaf hopper is often found in, in, in the lawn. Ah. And, and we don't want it to be able to move that kind of material into the, into the, into the island and then the chance exists that the leaf hopper, which is the host to the leaf yellow um, mycoplasma, mm -hmm. would then be released. Okay. And once it comes in the country, that's it. it. It multiplies itself so fast and moves so fast. So. The good thing is the Ministry of Agriculture platform team has been doing the sensitization already, um, long, long, long before in days of Hillary. Mm -hmm. And um, so, so there's a level of, of awareness that happened some years ago. Uh, myself also on your, one of your programs, I think, yes, and on the program book. we yeah. spoke about yeah, it. Yeah. So you have that. And the other thing is um, you have rats, mm -hmm. which can sometimes go in the tree right. and make the tree very dangerous. <laughs> but if a rat chews onto the, the, the part of the, the f that touch the fruit to the bunch and chews on that and that falls, that can cause death. Yes, in yes. fact, the statistics show that every year over 150 people die from fallen coconuts. Mm -hmm. So rodents in the trees is a critical thing. But apart from rodents, you have also natural trees drying, natural fruits drying up right. and they're falling they're falling, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. But the rodents is also an issue with, with the coconut plants. Mm -hmm. And of course, you have to make sure you, you properly take care of it. I, I, I've noticed some farmers um, in, well, growing the coconut plants, but they're doing it less than 40 feet. Which is not appropriate. Appropriate? No, it's not. Yeah, it's supposed to be at least 40 feet apart, mm -hmm. and if you're going to intercrop it, at least 25 feet apart. Yes, yes. So if you if you plant it too close, you may have problems with your productivity and your yield. Yes. So all different factors. Even even, even whether you fertilize or not, some farmers don't fertilize at all. Now in the days of bananas, as you in fact, yeah, 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 yes. In the days of bananas, yeah. um, once you took care of the bananas, you to fertilize. Get obviously, the, you get to fertilize yeah. at the same time. Yes. Right, that right now, that's why you have the yields are very low exactly. now. Exactly. But how and what we we are are we going to encourage farmers to, to really uh, look at pure stand coconut yes, plant plantations? Yes, yes. You know? Well, the good thing is the, the coconut cooperative in St. Lucia, they're doing a lot of work, mm. a lot of sensitization. Carl is doing a lot of sensitization. Even Ministry of Agriculture mm -hmm. is doing a lot of sensitization in front of people how important the coconut tree is and the importance of proper cultivation. Mm. So that's good because, I mean, a healthy coconut tree can give you about 100 coconuts per year, mm -hmm. you know, if it's well taken care of. And a coconut tree can last between 80 to 100 years. So that's a good, sustainable source of food and other materials. Correct. Many other things. <coughs> okay. In fact, um, 
What we had on Sunday, which was a, a combination of the cassava and coconut fe yes. festival, and you can understand why that marriage, because yes. growing up, you know, you eat poon, you eat cassava, and, oh, it, yes. and it, it, it has coconuts. Yes. But, I mean, I, mean, I was so uh, pleased to see the, le the number of derivatives on Sunday that, that the, the agro-processors did, and yes. we had a successful activity. And, and this is what we want to bring back. Yes. And I was telling some the people that um, I grew up uh, where um, I remember the days when there were soft drink bottles mm -hmm. and it, it was in demand and for so for, for, for people to get the bottles to sell they used to make tablets and they used to say tablet pubu <laughs> you know there was a battering taking place yes. so I used to leave school and run home trying to you know look for bottles to get the gegesh yes, 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 yes and this that in the rural areas that's what pe people used to do people used to make gegesh and tablets and so to sell to buy yes. school books for the children coconut cake and cake and this other thing yes. like you know yes. turnovers and, and yes. pones and all of these things yes. so I mean the coconut played a, 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 a critical role in the economic benefits of the people in the rural areas very very important, very, you know? very important. so so I what, what I want to know now I don't know whether it, 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 that to me that that has to happen to know the acreage do you know the acreage of coconuts and ocean as we speak well that is not being properly documented uh, we have to do on the ground I know the corporate co the coconut cooperative within Shari culture is doing some work on the ground mm. they started a few years back they got some material but it was not complete mm. so I think there's a, a, a going back and, and redoing again to top of the information but mm -hmm. it's, it's ongoing i think that is something that we need to know yes. we, because okay you you have to 12 coconut plants are going out to the farmers yes. are you keeping with your, i'm hoping that you yes. keep a record we'll be doing where that. it's we'll going that. to Definitely. you know at least and tells you how many the yeah. acreage that are, that are established on Very the ground true. i mean we need that moving moving forward yes. that too will tell because as somebody calls me and we're saying but the, we have no, no coconuts on ground and we have a coconut festival <laughs> so i'm saying no it's the reverse <laughs> right we do not have enough cassava on ground but yes. i think we still have a lot of coconuts of course you know, on ground now course. you know to have um uh, shell uh, and, uh, and the festival is a good thing because it opens people's minds to exactly different products and different exactly. industries that can be done mm -hmm. you know for, for example you know even the coconut jelly that's a, a very potent industry mm -hmm. and uh, poses a concern about the sanitary conditions when they sit by the roadside they're worried about that to meet right. some people you know but there are, there are technologies out there there's the, it's like HPP yeah high pressurized pasteurization yes which yes. Can, can make it uh, um, you can you apply that you don't lose the nutritive value as with the done of heat right but at the same time it is sanitized or it is it is removed from pathogens yeah and if the, the thing too the coconut husk I mean yes. uh, okay all that goes into the, the dump yes but we can take this thing and, and thread thre this thing so and, 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 and have compost it and compost, sell, sell to the media medium and can make mats ma the number of things is that even, even the BMW is at one time coconut husk was been used in the car seat too okay in the beginning okay coconut husk okay when okay. they moved into an artificial thing yeah, yeah, yeah. But you go down this thing, our, 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 our pillows, our pillows are long, mattresses. our mattresses. And, and that's where the bed bugs is, <laughs> bust our tails yes, too. Yes, you yes. know, so it was very, 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 you know. So as we're about to close the program, Mr. Innocent, tell us any final words from you. Well, I want to say that there are a lot of products that can be entrepreneurial um, activity can be done with a lot of products with coconuts and I want to enjoy it, can encourage the youth to look into it. Um, there's the, f the, the coconut jelly that's not really tapped in too well yet because you wouldn't see coconut jelly at Massey yet, mm. what's other uh, supermarkets, but mm. somebody can look into that, a young right. man, a young woman, a young group of people. Right. There are so many things that can be done with coconuts. As you mentioned, there's, there's mats, there's um, flower pots or, 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 or plant pots mm -hmm. made of the fiber. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of avenue for entrepreneurial activity. I want to encourage the youth to look into it, the unemployed to look into it and try to find some form of self-employment for yourself. Very good, very good. I also want to say thank you to those persons, the participants at our uh, Coconut and, and Kazaa Festival on Sunday. I think that was fantastically done. Uh, the patrons who, who, who really supported the activity, thank you very much. I must say thank you to Honorable Jer Jeremiah Norbert, the district rep, for c supporting this program. Thank you very much, very, very, very much. I look forward for our Kugo Festival on World Food Day in Sufre. Thank you again for viewing. I'm Philip Zinni saying goodbye and I'll see you again. Thank you, my brother. I miss one thing I should have mentioned with Carly John Carly. Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move.
Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on